Welcome to the solutions to the AP Physics Laws of Motions problem set. Problems number 16 and 17. For 16, we have two blocks that are fastened to the ceiling of an elevator shown in the diagram below. The elevator accelerates upward at 2 meters per second squared, so we know that that's A. Find the tension in each row. Tension, we typically uh, designate the letter capital T for. Um, you could use other designations as well. And as long as you're accurate, go ahead and do that. What we're going to start by doing here, as we should with any problem, uh, is start by drawing a free body diagram. We are going to call the top mass M1. We're going to call the bottom mass M2. So, starting from bottom and working our way to the top, we would have M2G for the weight of the, uh, of the bottom object. Let's try that again. M2G. We also have this tension in this rope up on this object. We will call that T2. You could call it anything you wanted. For the top object, M1, we have its weight down, M1, G. We also have that second rope pulling down on it. And we have this rope pulling up on it. And so we'll call that T1. And just to keep these straight, We'll call T1 the tension in rope AB, and T2 will be the tension in rope CD, as shown in the diagram. Okay. Our job is to find these two tensions, T1 and T2. All right, let's start with the bottom object first, because it's the easiest one. We'll start by writing our... Um, equation for Newton's second law. So we'll start out with sigma f equals, and we're going to be specific because we're looking for the tension in T2, which is attached to mass M2. So sigma f equals M2a. Is this bottom block accelerating? And the answer, of course, is yes. Uh, we were told that the whole system is accelerating upward at 2 meters per second squared. Since the answer is yes, we now go ahead and summate. Remember, direction of motion is positive. So this would be T2 minus M2G equals M2A. Substitute T2 minus 10 times 9.8 equals 10 times 2. Solve this algebraically. Go ahead, pause the, the video if you need a moment. And you should get 118 newtons. All right, so we have the tension in rope CD. Now we need the tension in rope AB. We're going to start that the same way. And what I'm about to show you is a preference. So there are actually a couple ways to solve for this answer. I'm going to show you the way um, that's preferred uh, by solving it for the whole system. This is a whole system's approach to solving for this top tension in rope AB. So we're going to say sigma f equals, and I'm going to say m1 plus m2a. Why? Because that top rope not only supports mass M1, it also is supporting mass M2. It's just that uh, in between M1 and M2 is a rope. But you can also take a look at it this way, that the tension up on M2 and the tension down on M1 cancel each other out with regards to a summation that you would do just for the top block. Okay. 
So if treating it as a whole system, the tension in rope AB, which we're calling T1, is actually accelerating both masses, and that's why you see that our mass is combined here in the equation. Now we're going to go ahead and do the summation. This would be T1 up, it's the only force in the positive direction, minus, and the only force we have in the negative direction is the weight M1G and M2G or we would say M1 plus M2G equals M1 plus M2A. Go ahead and substitute T1 minus 20 times 9.8 equals 20 times 2. Go ahead and solve algebraically. Pause the video if you need a moment. And we get 236 newtons. Now this should make sense. As mentioned, this top rope is accelerating double the mass. That means it should have twice as much tension in it. And if you take 118 and multiply by 2, indeed you get 236. Make sure you note any questions you have on this problem and ask in class tomorrow when you're given the opportunity to do so. Next, we're going to move on to problem 17. We have a dock worker loading crates on a ship, finds a 20 kilogram crate. That's the crate's mass. Initially, it rests on a horizontal surface. Okay. It sounds like, okay, we'll write down VO for that. Requires a 75 Newton horizontal force to set it in motion. This 75 Newton force, then, is the amount of force required to just get it moving. This would be the static friction required to move the object, to just get it moving. However, after the crate is in motion, a horizontal force of 60 newtons is required to keep it moving at constant speed. That means this would be the kinetic friction required to just keep it moving at a constant speed. Find the coefficients of static and kinetic friction. So they want mu s and mu k between the crate and the floor. Okay, quick little free body diagram on our crate here. We're going to have a force forward. We're going to have our friction backward. And that friction is either going to be static to just get it moving, or it's going to be kinetic, as mentioned later in the problem, to keep it moving. And what else do we have? We have the weight of the crate down, and we have the normal force of the floor pushing back up on the crate. That would be the free body diagram for the crate. This is our first friction problem here, and not too bad, because all they're asking us is for is the coefficients. So we'll start off with Fs equals mu s Fn. Well, as we talked about earlier in our friction lesson, the normal force is equal to the object's weight when no other forces are acting perpendicular to the object. So instead of the normal force, what we can do is just simply substitute mg. We know that the normal force is equal to the weight, as mentioned and shown earlier uh, in our lesson on friction. This allows us to go ahead and calculate for the coefficient, because we know the static friction is 75 newtons, Mu s is what we're looking for. We know the mass of the crate is 20. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. Go ahead and solve for mu s. Pause if you need a moment. And check in your answer. You should get 0.38. No units. Okay, unitless. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction. 
We're going to take the same approach. And we're going to go start with FK. equals mu k fn. Once again, our normal force is equal to the object's weight, so this becomes mu k times mg. Okay. Go ahead and you substitute. The kinetic friction here is 60 equals mu k times 20. 9.8 and solve from UK. Pause if you need a moment and check in your answer, you should get 0.31. So our coefficient of static friction is 0.38. Our coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.31. Our answer makes sense because our, our kinetic coefficient is always going to be less than our static coefficient. Again, note any questions that you have. On, on this or the previous problem and make sure you ask about those in class tomorrow when you're given the chance to do so. More on Newton's laws and uh, incorporating friction in problems that we'll work on tomorrow.